Welcome to this service from the Sherwood Forest Methodist Circuit. It's good to be with you again as we share in worship on this Sunday morning. I'm going to begin with some opening prayers. First of all, a prayer in which we make affirmations of what it means to be God's people. Incomparable God, your goodness exceeds the bounds of our imagination. You go on loving when love seems impossible. You go on forgiving when sin is unforgivable. You call us out of the narrow confines of self-righteousness where we struggle with sin in ourselves and fear of it in others to enter into the broad place of your compassion with its long horizons and its never-ending possibilities so that we may face life with the buoyancy of faith and meet our fellow men and women with certainty and hope. Conscious of what you have in mind for the human race, we commit ourselves again to unlimited goodness in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll spend a few moments now as we remember in the ways in which we have failed to live up to that and have not been the people that God would want us to be. A prayer of confession. When we disobey you, God, you are silent. When you pollute your world and when we pollute your world and destroy its inhabitants, you are silent. When we took your son and crucified him, you were silent. We have taken silence for weakness and we have suffered for it. Help us to hear you in the silence of your suffering servant and help us to recognize the voice of undying love coming in power to save the world from the noise of war and the cry of pain. Then we shall know that we are forgiven and serve the world in joyful hope. Amen. Jesus comes to bring us that forgiveness and in his name we claim the goodness and love of God. A prayer for this Sunday. Almighty God, you sent your Son Jesus Christ to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens and ensnares us and bring us to eternal light and joy through the power of him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth and I will daily lift my hands. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love I know, but I 
Today's story is about three men. The first man was given five bags of gold by his master. The second man, two bags of gold. And the third man, one bag of gold. Each went off with their gold while the master went away. The first man got busy and he doubled his five bags. He made 10 bags of gold. The second man did the same, he doubled it and so made four bags of gold. But the third man, he was scared. He didn't know what to do with the gold, so he buried it in the ground. When the master returned, the men came with their bags of gold. The first man came and said, here you are, master, I've made 10 bags of gold. The second came and said, I have made four. The third man came and said, I didn't know what to do and I didn't want to lose you any money. So buried it in the ground. Here's your one bag back. Well, the master congratulated the first two men and said, well done. But the third man, he was disappointed. He said, you've not even tried. You've done nothing with this money. You could have at least put it in the bank and then it could have made some interest. You see, the man wanted the men to use their money for something. So, today's story is all about talents. So let's do a craft to explore that a little bit more. Right everyone, so you should have cut out your bags and your coins. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our glue and we're going to glue around the rim of our money bag, just one. So just around the rim of your money bag. And the reason we're going to go around the rim and not all the way into the middle is because we want to leave a pocket inside so, once you've glued around the rim, pop your bag on top and then just stick it down. Now, feel free to decorate your bag any way you would like. Then, you're going to need to get your coins. Now, the first man was given five, which is why I've picked five. I want you to think, what are you good at? What are your talents? And for every coin that you have, I want you to turn it over and either write or draw something that you are good at. So for me, I'm gonna put singing because I really love to sing. I'm going to put craft because I really enjoy craft. So have a think, what are the things that you are good at? And then, Pop them inside your bag and then you can get them out and remember what you have been gifted as a talent. Now, it's amazing that you have got those gifts. Remember, we don't have to be the best at them and we can all have different gifts and talents. But it is really important to remember that we can share them with the people around us 
at home, at work and at school. Just like the men who took the money from their master went out and used it to make something better, you too can share your gifts and talents to help other people. The reading today is taken from Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. It's entitled, Jesus tells the parable of the loaned money. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. The man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many years ago, when I was training to go overseas, I spent two terms at Kingsmead College, which was where Methodists went in those days uh, to prepare for overseas service. It was one of several colleges in the Selly Oak uh, group run by the various denominations. And one of those colleges was the College of Ascension which was an Anglican college and we were invited there for their special service on Ascension Day and we shared in this communion service. When it came to the offertory, which is when the bread and the wine are brought forward for, uh, for communion, people were also asked to bring things that represented what they wanted to offer for God, to God. So, for instance, one person brought the keys to the house, saying that they wanted their house to be a place of welcome that could, uh, could serve the gospel. Another person brought forward a pair of spectacles because they wanted their, their learning and the things that they read to be used in the service of the gospel. Others brought their car keys as something, uh, a car being something that they could use in the service of others. And all sorts of things like this came forward and people were invited to say why they brought the, 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 the gift, what it meant to them and what they hoped to be able to do with the thing that they were offering. 
Now, today's reading, of course, is the parable of the talents, where we have three servants who have been given, entrusted with, with money by their master, and they have to look after it and do something with it. Now, you have to be careful with parables because they're not allegories. And um, when we look at the picture of the master in this story, and it says that he's a harsh man and that he reaps where he doesn't sow and all the rest of it. If you think, well, that you've got to apply every bit of that to God. Is God like that? Harsh and reaping where he doesn't sow. Then you get into real trouble. But if you see the parable, like all the parables of Jesus, as making one particular point, then I think you can see what this is about. The parable comes at the end of a section in Matthew's Gospel, which we often refer to as Matthew's Apocalypse. Apocalypse is a type of writing that we find in the Bible that is very often talking about end times and mystical things happening. There's the book of Revelation, which is very strange, uh, or the book of Daniel, or there are certainly parts of the book of Daniel. It comes very almost always from a time of great hardship and persecution when God's people are saying to themselves, why is this happening to us? And if this is happening to us, where is God in it? Why is God allowing us to suffer in this way? Here in Matthew's Gospel, probably the suffering that people were experiencing at the time that the Gospel was written down was the destruction of the temple by the Romans, which took place in AD 70, and the terrible slaughter that happened in Jerusalem at that time. Jesus, of course, is speaking before that time, but I strongly uh, suspect that Matthew has those things in mind as he puts down these, uh, these thoughts in his gospel. And he gives us four parables, and they, they follow uh, one after another. There's the parable of the faithless servant. There's the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. There's this parable, of the three servants and the talents, and then there's the parable of the sheep and the goats. And in each of these, if you think about them, what's being said is that the people who are, uh, who are condemned or the people uh, who um, uh, are spoken against in, the, in these parables are the ones who are not ready and who do not use the gifts that God has given them in his service. So here, I think the first important point is that the, the three servants are given this money by the master. They're not told what to do with it. The chap who went and hid the, his money, uh, the money in the ground, um, well, he didn't have any more information from, uh, from his master than the other two, according to what we read in the parable anyway. They each took the decision as to what to do with it. But he's condemned not because he didn't look after his master's money. It was there at the end of the day. He's condemned because he didn't use it. He didn't make use of what the master had given him. And in the same way, we are called upon to use the gifts that God has given us. And when we think about that, sometimes we, we think to ourselves, well, I'm not particularly gifted. I haven't, what have I got to offer? And we talk about particular individuals as being gifted, as if they're special. Well, they may be special in, in some way. And we all know that some people have, have more gifts than others. Yet surely it's the truth that each one of us has something to offer, something to offer God, something to offer our neighbour, ways in which we can serve others, ways in which we can use 
what God has given us in the service of those around us and in the service of the gospel. Maybe this time of COVID, when we are having to sit back in a way and, uh, and, and keep ourselves safe and we're not able to go out and do many of the things that we would want to do, we can't worship in the normal way, we can't go and see our friends and our neighbours and our family as we would want to. Maybe when our lives are so restricted, this is a time to take stock, to think about what it is that God has given me. What are the gifts that I have to share with others and how can I use them? If we can use this time of COVID for reflection in that way, then maybe when all this is over, and pray God that will be soon, then we will be able to serve in new and wonderful ways. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time of uncertainty all around us. 
Can we go out or should we stay in? Can we see our family or can we chat on the phone? Can we go to the shops where we have to queue? Lord, the one thing we have in this uncertainty is you, always there watching over us. Lord, we ask that you will bring love and compassion to all the, those families that have lost loved ones in this uncertain world. Lord God, we ask that you will say to all our frontline workers, well done, good and faithful servants. Lord God, there's decisions to be made by so many people. Are they certain or uncertain? Lord, help all those people to make the right decisions and put some certainty back into our lives. Lord God, I ask you to help those who make decisions about our churches. Are they open or are they closed? Do we open them this week or will it be next month? There are such difficult decisions to make. So Lord, we ask you to make these decisions and let us know in our hearts when the time is right and safe for everyone to come back together. And Lord, we pray that we will hear those words, well done, my faithful servants. Amen. We will now say the prayer that we are so certain about. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our blessing for today. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm and bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you and bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.